Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast. And in Magic, there are what we in design call evergreen keywords. Flying, trample, lifelink, mechanics that any set can have. These mostly stay the same, but every now and then, one will shine through enough to be incorporated into the game permanently. Like how Scry showed up in Fifth Dawn. And then after coming back in Future Sight, M11, and Theros, we decided we loved it enough to promote it to the big leagues. It's pretty rare when this kind of thing happens, and so today I want to talk about a mechanic you're definitely going to be seeing more of in the future. Ready? Let's go. As magic has evolved over the years, its mechanics have evolved with it. In the past decade, we've seen a huge rise in multiplayer play thanks to formats like Commander. But one of the challenges with multiplayer magic is that the board gets stalled and people don't have enough of a reason to attack. So in Conspiracy 1, we tackled that challenge with Dethrone, which worked all right. It was a step in the right direction, but the payoff of a counter wasn't always enough to keep action rolling. But it was in Conspiracy 2, Take the Crown, that I really feel we cracked this nut. Monarch really incentivized people to attack strongly, and it was such a hit that I put it into Commander Legends. But the sleeper mechanic for me, which really helped the format work, was Goad. It worked great in Conspiracy, was on several other cards over time, turned into a cycle of impetuses in Commander 2020, and in the past year, we've seen Karazakar, Lorene, and Kaima goading as legends in our Commander decks. Go does a lot of really important things all at once. First of all, it helps solve that problem of keeping the game moving. If creatures are getting goaded, there's going to be attacking. And by having one creature forced to attack, often it will convince people to attack with more or use a combat trick to help their creature get through. Plus, once that creature is tapped, it makes it easier for people to counterattack, helping those dominoes to fall. It can really help make sure action happens. Second, it gives the game a wider range of interaction. Having your cards removed all the time is pretty frustrating, but the most common kind of effect you're going to play to target an opponent's creature is probably a removal spell. Goad gives you a much less punishing effect that still gives you that feeling of protection. It also is a pretty cheap effect from a mana cost perspective, so we can easily put it on creatures enter the battlefield effects and bonus riders on spells. And speaking of protection, one problem with cards that don't let people attack you is they can bog down the game. Propaganda and Ghostly Prison help keep the heat off, but can also dissuade attacking entirely. Goad helps you feel protected while making sure attacks still happen. And notably, it's an effect Red can get, which actually plays out defensively, a neat way for Red to not get attacked while remaining in color pie. But you can't just goad forever either. When it's down to one-on-one, -on -one, you gotta still be ready to close out the game. Now, there are pitfalls here too. Everything needs to happen in moderation. Goading a little is great. Goading a lot can be unfun. Too much repeated goad makes players feel like they're losing agency in the game. A lot of times we start finding promise in something new and then go a little overboard with the mechanic. This time around, I'm hoping we can be a bit more restrained, making enough cards to feel fun without making so many strong goad cards that it feels like everything is always going to have to attack forever. In any case, goad has played so well that now, in my mind, it's Commander Evergreen. Granted, that doesn't mean as much for Commander decks since they generally get any mechanics they want, as evidenced by using Goad at regular intervals already, but it does mean you are more likely to see it in decks, and that any future Commander booster sets 
such as Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate, can use as much goad as they'd like. This is especially good for draft formats after all, given that one piece of feedback many players had when drafting Commander Legends 1 was that games stalled out. And of course, there's no mandate or anything that a set has to use more goad, that's totally up to the set lead. I would expect this stays in multiplayer sets only for now. Putting a card that goads in at common or uncommon in a one-on-one -on -one set is a little jarring, since it looks out of place in something like draft. But who knows? We've done stuff like Carter Doom Scourge already, so it's not totally out of the question as time goes on. But what do you think? Are you a Goad fan? Or maybe you really don't like it. Either way, let me know what you're hoping for in the comments down below. I'll talk with you again soon. And until then, may you go for the Goad. You got this. That like standard, they would rotate the format eventually. Just wait and see. Yeah, look, things were different back then. Anyway, a lot of decks which sound classic now showed up in those first couple years of Extended, whether Randy Bueller's Necropotence deck winning Pro Tour Chicago in 1990.